In today's video, how high can your calories go in a reverse diet? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. Happy Saturday and uh, today's question comes from my Instagram direct message. So if you want to ask a question, if you want to know more about nutrition, about training, about any kind of question you have, whether it comes to contest prep or just reaching your fitness goals, well hit the subscribe button because this week I've done a daily video. That's right. This initially started out as a channel where I kind of documented a little bit about my journey and then I got into answering questions from my clients and now I'm putting those questions out on the internet and you guys are sending me direct messages and these are some of the questions that I'm answering. And because of all that, something incredible happened the other day. And I want to thank you guys for this directly because I never intended to be a YouTuber, but I must say it, it's official. I'm proud to be a YouTuber, okay? Um, you know, and this is something that came in the mail the other day from YouTube. Um, they contacted me a while back and said, hey, congratulations on all you're doing. And uh, I was really impressed because an organization the size of YouTube, you don't really expect it to feel very personal, but this feels very, very personal. I got a nice, uh, you know, I don't know if you can see it there. I'll put it on the wall here in the days to come, but basically just says it's presented to me for passing 100,000 subscribers, but guess what? That's you guys. I don't get to click that button to subscribe to my own channel, so this thing on the wall represents you guys appreciating what I do, and I couldn't thank you more for that, so leave a comment below if you are a subscriber, and I'm gonna thank you personally if you do. All right, so I'm gonna read today's questions and we're gonna get to it. How high can I go with my calories in a reverse diet? When will I know that my metabolism will no longer adapt to the calories and will store fat from this point. I have been in a caloric deficit for probably over a year now. I have tracked my calories since the mid-May this year. Most of the time I was eating around 1,500 calories. Okay, so let's talk about this. How high can your calories go? What are some of the limits? I've seen some pretty remarkable things, okay? Um, you know, we all tend to follow, if you, if you know about statistics, there's the bell curve okay so you're either on one side of the bell curve or the other or the extremes and most of us 99 percent of us are going to fall in that range of the middle of the bell curve but there are going to be some people that can't hardly add any food and there's going to be people on the other side that can eat extreme amounts of food and i've worked with a few of these people so to give you an example um <laughs> even right now i have a girl that weighs 85 pounds in canada she's eating upwards of 400 carbs um maintaining you know sub 10 percent body fat and you know she's just what I call a genetic outlier. I've had, I think the, the, the biggest case I've ever seen um, was a pro natural bodybuilder I worked with a few years ago and he was eating 350 grams of protein, six to 700 grams of carbs and 150 to 200 grams of fat a day and maintaining six pack shredded, right? Um, now he was a 230, 240 pound natural bodybuilder, just a massive man. Um, you know, and, and so there are some genetic outliers, but I think a lot of it's gonna fall generally with what I would consider kind of the top of the spectrum. And that usually comes down to somewhere in that 15 to 20 times your body weight in calories. Um, and if we're talking about body weight, we're talking about pounds, because remember, America, no metric system. But maybe someday we'll get there, because it's way better. But the idea is, that we're looking at calories as opposed to just macronutrients, right? So what's the most you can get your calories up to? And it's so individualized, I can't give you that answer. I can't say, hey, this is the number. But I can answer this question for sure. How do you know when your metabolism is no longer adapting up? Well, typically you're gonna to start to notice more fat deposits. You're gonna to start to see the scale increase at a rapid rate and you're likely gonna to start to feel so much satiety that you no longer wanna eat food. You look at food and go, oh, another meal. I have clients that diet down and they have to get under 100 carbs and they have to do lots of cardio and they would do anything to eat. And then the same case comes when we're in the building season and we're improving, we're, we're maximizing that metabolism, we're putting on tons of muscle and what's happening at that moment? 
They don't want to eat. They're like, oh, coach, please don't give me any more calories. So I'm going to give you a few tips to follow here. So when you're reverse dieting, if you really want to, you know, keep things going for longer, typically what I like to do is add slower. So we're adding 50 to 100 calories a week, really taking our time, not really trying to just throw three, four, 500 calories at a time. Because if you do that, what I find happens is you put on the body fat right away and it takes the metabolism a couple, you know, weeks to catch up. Versus if you just go with the 50 to 100 calories a week, now, this assumes that you're not just coming out of a fat loss phase and you're really shredded. We need to put calories up higher than that. But if we're just trying to find out where our metabolism can go without putting on body fat, slower is better. I've also found this trick. Keep cardio in. Don't pull cardio out immediately. You know, we, used to, we get used to moving more. So keep some movement in. Now, that doesn't mean you need to go to the gym to do your cardio. You can get out and do a couple walks per day. But adding calories is much more predictable when we keep our activity level the same and when we do it in a slower manner, okay? Now the next one, when we start to feel full. Now most of us, when we're dieting down, we start to get really good at eating foods that are high volume, foods that are going to be uh, you know, very nutritious, micronutrient dense, why? Well, because when calories are restricted, you wanna get the best options possible. But when calories get higher, it can be necessary to give ourselves something that isn't going to be considered so nutritious. Why? Well, because some of those foods are very hard to digest and it can make you feel full for so long that you're not actually able to get in more food. This is when I'll actually bring protein down, okay? Carbohydrates are protein sparing. So if you're overeating on protein at the end of a dieting phase because, well, it's good for that. You know why? Because it helps with satiety, it helps with food volume, and it's very hard for protein to be stored as body fat. But when we start to get the upward trends of, of, fat, of, uh, of protein, well, that can start to have some issues with digestion. It can really impact our digestion and make it slow because protein is so hard to digest. So when metabolism starts cranking, I might even pull down the protein down to a gram per pound, and that way we can crank up some more carbs and fats. So there are some tricks into getting more calories. You know, you have to pay attention to like food volume at the end of a diet is gonna be higher. Food volume might be lower when calories get higher, okay? so that digestion improves and um, you know the breakdown of food is a lot more accessible. Well, that's it, that's the question. Hopefully that answered it. But again, I cannot thank you guys enough for this YouTube button. It, uh, it just got me in the feels and uh, I also just got some good news that my client, Allison Jury, just won an overall bikini title. So congratulations, Allison. I got some other people competing today. It's Saturday, I'm gonna go hang out with the family and uh, I'll talk to you guys probably Monday. I might take tomorrow off, you know, go celebrate my YouTube play button.